All righty. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us for part six of our diversity, equity, and inclusion webinar series. This eight part webinar series will feature two tracks. Sessions on the Tuesday track are aimed at building diversity, equity, and inclusion practices in your workplace and in the community. And sessions on the Thursday track are focused on highlighting diverse owned businesses and entrepreneurs. This webinar series is presented by the Greater Wyoming Valley Chambers Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Council and sponsored by PNC Bank. Uh, before, I go, before I introduce our presenting sponsor, I wanna go over some housekeeping items. All attendees will be in listen-only mode. To be respectful of everyone's time, we have a lot of time at the end for questions and answers. Feel free to ask a question at any time during the presentation by submitting them in the Q&A section or in the chat box. This event is also being live streamed on Facebook. For anyone watching on Facebook, please enter your questions in the comment section and we will ask on your behalf. The recording of this session will be available on our Facebook and YouTube pages by the end of the week and will be linked in the main event page for the webinar series. Uh, now to get us started, I wanna thank our sponsor, PNC Bank for again sponsoring our diversity, equity, and inclusion webinar series. Uh, we have a quick video from PNC to show and then we'll hear some remarks today from John Rossetti before he introduces today's speaker. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of everyone at PNC, I'd like to welcome you to today's webinar. At PNC, we embrace and promote diversity and inclusion as a core element of our values and culture. We recognize that it's bigger than any single person or group, and when coupled with collaborative teams and inclusive leaders, we have far-reaching impact. Taking the time to join us today indicates that you are interested in learning more about the roles and responsibilities necessary to create more opportunities for positive understanding and change. Thank you for showing up to prioritize diversity, equity, and inclusion today. Thank you also to the Greater Wyoming Valley Chamber for creating this series and to the phenomenal presenters for sharing their time and expertise to help us foster a more inclusive culture in our community. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker, Lakeisha Denson. Lakeisha is the owner and photographer of Beyond Pond Photography, capturing weddings, portraits, and products for different types of businesses. She helps clients feel vibrant and express their true selves. Couples, <clears throat> couples memorial, mem memorialize their love story and small business owners elevate their products and clean creative with clean and creative images. Lakeisha has been a photographer, photographer for almost six years and since then has worked with the Northeast Pennsylvania Pet Fund and Rescue to raise awareness for pet adoptions, Queer Northeast PA as the board secretary and has blogged for cattle for Catalyst Wedding Company. She's also made an appearance on the podcast for Love Life of an Asian Guy and discussing what it's like being a small black owned business owner and surviving through the pandemic. Currently, she's working on a project to highlight small black owned businesses and of course is doing what she loves, photography. With that being said, it's my pleasure to introduce to you, Lakeisha Denson. Lakeisha, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you so much, John, for having me. Um, and of course, the Greater Wyoming Valley Chamber of Commerce. Um, as he said, I am a photographer, been a photographer for almost six years. Um, so, but today I want to talk about creating supportive ecosystems for Black, Indigenous, and people of color owned businesses in the area. Um, so, I'm going to go ahead and start here. Okay, so to begin, what is a supportive business ecosystem? So James F. Moore, a management scientist and a leading advocate coined the term business ecosystem. He said that in a business ecosystem, companies co-evolve capabilities around new innovation. They work cooperatively and competitively to support new products, sa satisfy customer needs, and eventually incorporate the next round of innovations. So how can this help small businesses owned by Black, Indigenous, and people of color in Northeastern Pennsylvania? 
It helps break barriers. It can help provide income, provide employment, create equity, establish security, and promote growth and a sense of community. The businesses in our community. We have to know where we are today to know where we're going tomorrow. So how many are there? This is just a rough estimate from the 2019 census um, provided by um, the census website <laughs> focused on Lackawanna County, Luzerne County, and Wyoming County. Um, now, of course, with the pandemic and the 2020 census not being counted just yet, these numbers may uh, have changed a little bit. But you can see the orange is non-minority owned and the blue is minority owned. So what does today's support look like? A number of businesses these days ask for very simple things um, to help support uh, black owned businesses, especially during Black History Month, they'll share, promote and highlight businesses. Um, so following on social media, um, like commenting and sharing, of course, word of mouth can help very, in very small communities. Um, writing a review can help someone decide if they want to work with a business or buy a product. Then of course, there's actually buying a product or a service, um, you know, providing that business with the income to keep going, or some people will just donate um, to a project or just to fund the business, especially if it's not something that they are looking to buy themselves, um, but still in a way supporting a business. <clears throat> So tomorrow we break barriers. So breaking barriers, what obstacles exist? So the common barriers that black indigenous and people of color usually face as entrepreneurs are economic barriers. That includes disempowerment, um, which can cause a person or a group of people to be less likely than others to succeed and the cost of low starting levels of capital. And of course with businesses, um, capital is, can be very vital to the beginning stages of a business. That's how you fund things, um, a product or getting yourself out there as a service um, or buying the materials that you need. There are market barriers and they can challenge access to said capital, um, accessing business related services or networks. That can be something as simple as um, accessing to a chamber of commerce actually, um, or just getting around to working with um, platforms that can help them digi digitize their business um, or just services like accounting, um, things just to help keep them going. And then of course there's the access to knowledge or skill. And with that is a lot of entrepreneurs um, they kind of don't have the know-how in some aspects. So their business can suffer, especially if, if they're putting on a lot of different hats um, or whatever industry that they're in, they're not really well versed in the skills necessary to grow that business. There's so socio-cultural barriers, um, which are social and cultural biases that prevent social capital and building viable relationships and then exclusionary practices. Social capital is, is pretty much um, people Con connecting with others, um, finding ways to, to build upon those connections and building networks. Um, and so there are some different ways that how people feel about a business or a business owner um, can definitely help prevent them from, from connecting and growing themselves. And then there's the institutional barriers. And location can limit potential, um, especially depending on the demographics of an area. Um, if, it, and if an area is so inclined to work with certain kinds of businesses or certain kinds of people, somebody that is new and upcoming that doesn't fit that demographic may struggle a little bit. And then of course, there is the issue with financial institutions that black and indigenous and people of color have experienced. Um, not just on a personal level, but on a professional business level. 
So this is just um, a few charts that I'm going to share regarding capital. Um, if you can see the top three most used sources of capital are savings, business loans, and personal credit cards. For Asian and Hispanic entrepreneurs, they rely on personal and family savings as the most source of startup capital. So this means that they may have put money away for quite some time and said, you know what, today I'm going to start a business. So they may tap out a family savings or they may borrow money from friends and family to try and build that capital to start up their business. For white entrepreneurs that rely mostly on business loans from banks or other financial institutions are a source of startup capital. So as I mentioned, loans, um, grants, sometimes um, depending on the kind of business, they may set up a, an in investment kind of agreement. So these businesses already have that strong capital with kind of not very limited funds in a way. And then black entrepreneurs rely mostly on personal credit cards to fund new companies or acquire existing ones. So in this aspect, some entrepreneurs are most likely going to fall into debt um, with trying to raise the capital they need for their business. So, one of the other things is not wanting to accrue debt and not thinking that a business will be approved by a lender are two primary reasons why businesses that needed additional funding did not apply for it. So if you can see the top two, the very first one is did not want to accrue debt. So if you're already kind of in a financial hole, whether it's with family or with a card or a bank, you don't want to continue digging yourself into a further hole. Um, and most of the time, other businesses wouldn't think that they'd be approved by a lender. So for whatever reason, um, if they go in to a bank the first time and wanted to get additional funds, they would probably think that for whatever reason, their business would not be good enough or they wouldn't be able to substantiate why, um, why getting more funds from the lender would be beneficial. So there are some solutions to economic barriers. So as a business or as a person in your community, you can help fund startups. Having this money can help businesses not fall into debt. If you sponsor a small business or establish a partnership or become an investor or provide in kind equity contributions, you can help a business retain profit. It can be a mutual financial benefit for the both of you and it can help create an opportunity for growth. Maybe not just for the business that you're looking to help, but for the community that business is in and for yourself as well. So market barriers. <clears throat> Lack of experience or education can be a barrier to minorities as entrepreneurs. Um, with this, like I mentioned, sometimes people that start up as entrepreneurs as sole proprietors, they don't have a lot of experience or education behind that. So a lot of times they may not survive as long or they'll fail a little faster. Um, a lack of finances can hinder technological advances to digitize a business. As I mentioned, this is with wearing a lot of hats, especially if a, a business owner is not very techno technologically inclined, um, they can suffer in not being able to share themselves in a very technological world that we are in today where everything is basically a, a, a push of a button away. Um, so not having access to that information um, on how to go about putting themselves out there in that manner or um, just the lack of data on how that works, whether it's with you know SEO or um, just setting up a website, learning how to read analytics data, understanding you know, how to market yourself. So these things can help prevent growth. And of course, there is a gap in regards to black indigenous people of color self-employment entry rates, as you can see in the chart. Um, again, it might have changed a little bit with the way that the pandemic has been affecting everyone. Um, but this chart from 2014, um, it shows that the differences between owners with with paid employees, they either had experience before 
And then on the other half, um, they didn't have the experience. So you can see that the number uh, for Black or African Americans is, and Hispanic is a little bit different than for either all firms or um, the white focused firms. So business skills development solutions. So some ways that you can help businesses that are suffering in these areas is you can provide training programs to help reskill or upskill entrepreneurs. What this means is maybe if you have a business that can provide a service, you might be open to providing um, training webinars or seminars to help these other businesses that aren't so inclined to help learn in a few new tricks or just to refresh themselves on some skills that they had learned previously. Um, you can provide additional resources or create a hub for your industry that's easily accessible. So for the food industry, that was one of the areas that was hit the most during the pandemic. Um, if you own a business and you found a way that that works or resources to help your business continue. Um, you can create a hub to share that information with other businesses that are, are likely not sustaining very well as you are. And that can disproportionately be for Black, Indigenous, and people of color owned businesses. Um, you can help with digital transitions if you offer those business services. So, what that means is if you're a web developer or um, or if you do analytics, anything that is digital to help a business kind of put themselves out there, that's something that you can offer your services for if you feel like they might be struggling um, or they're really kind of just sticking to Facebook and not really having much of a presence. Um, you can support local and federal funding for skills acqu acquisition initiatives. So what that means is if you know that a bill might be coming up um, in voting or you want to push for your representatives to really offer programs to help businesses um, and their owners learn new skills or just provide funding into education. That's something that you definitely want to help support. And again, back to the digital transition, if you create, um, I apologize, <laughs> um, if, you, if you're good at sharing um, information or uh, developing courses, again, being able to make that information accessible to businesses can be really, really helpful. I mean, as we know, a highly educated owner can yield higher sales, profits, um, stronger survival rates, and then potentially hire more employees. So as a business grows with orders, customers, um, even changing from maybe a home based location to maybe a small storefront or warehouse, you know, you might need more hands on deck. Um, Black, Indigenous, and people of color owned businesses are likely to share knowledge that they have learned with others to help keep them going as well. So, not only are you helping a business go from where they are to somewhere else, but they can potentially share that knowledge with someone else to help give them a leg up. So, in all, it's kind of just one big revolving helpful circle. So lacking social capital, as I mentioned before, social capital is really about people. So I have a few questions that I want people to really think about um, in regarding black and indigenous and people of color owned businesses and how you operate with them. So how many of these businesses do you personally know? Do you know how to find them? Is there anything stopping you from connecting with them or for them connecting with you? One of the main reasons why businesses can lack in social capital is because most of the professional networks are made up of people with similar backgrounds. So as we saw the chart before, there is a huge gap in between minority owned businesses and non-minority owned businesses. So for minority owned businesses to try and reach out and to connect and build these relationships and network, it can be a little bit overwhelming or intimidating or just challenging in general, especially if it, you know, if those circles around them either don't look like them or socially and culturally different, it may be hard to kind of find a common ground. 
So these are just a few of the local resources that I found online that have highlighted and represented uh, Black, Indigenous, and people of color owned businesses. Black Scranton has a Black business directory that has, as of, as of recently, 52 businesses listed. Um, Discover NEPA and WNEPA default to this list. I've noticed that some other um, publications or news stations um, really focus on using this specific list. And while this is a great list, I'm on this list as well. <laughs> um, there are so many more businesses and having to default to just one list kind of doesn't really help shine a light on all the other ones that actually do exist. So um, University of Scranton had a focus project where their students highlighted a few Hispanic and Latinx owned businesses in the area. Um, they helped create social profiles for these businesses. And you can find them on Facebook um, and actually I meant to share the, the page that is actually under. Um, and I apologize, but I'm happy to share that information later. Um, I recently learned that a Pennsylvania in Asian Indian community has actually started a local magazine. So within that magazine, they share a lot about their culture and that you can find entrepreneurs there as well. And they highlight quite a few different people within their community. Um, I believe it's monthly or bi-monthly. And then there's uh, supportblackowned.com. This is a website that I found on my own at a point when I was looking to build my project that I'm still working on. Um, and it, the number of businesses there are a little scarce, but it allows you to search um, by industry and by location. So if you were looking to find someone to support that was in Lackawanna County, you'd be able to search for that. Um, and then there's the PHFA. This specific website lists minorities and women owned businesses throughout Pennsylvania. And this again is searchable by location and by industry. So these are just a few of the resources that people can use to help connect with these with these businesses here in the area. Is it a perfect list? No. Is it a full list? No. But it's something that can be continually built upon um, over time. Solutions to networking. So if you are one of those people or a business that loves to create meetups, or you're in a place where you can sponsor a mentorship, this is something that you can do um, to not only help welcome these businesses, but also give them a sense of community. Being able to meet up with someone either in the same industry or just someone looking to help elevate business owners, it's a really amazing feeling and to have that kind of support can really help motivate somebody to keep going. Have a vendor list on your website or on whatever platform that you use to share your business, you can highlight a few businesses that you might be able to work with to share with customers, friends, or family. So for instance, say you might run a construction business. You would be able to share someone that may provide something as simple as paint, um, furniture makers, landscapers, um, garden stores, florist stores, um, just anything that you feel would be complementary to your industry, have a list of these, of these businesses that you can share and refer to people. Encourage local chamber of commerce to engage non-member small businesses. So a lot of times, um, a lot of people will kind of shy away from a chamber of commerce because of the cost. So if you, if you are part of a chamber of commerce and you really want to try to expand the outreach to small businesses that either feel that the cost for the membership is too much um, or they're just unsure if they would be a good fit, encourage to have meetings, um, presentations, just any way to help really push that engagement for these small businesses. If you're a larger business, work with smaller businesses to diversify supplier base. So that can go back to having a vendor list. Um, 
but not only does that help your community, but that helps you. That way you're, you're working with other businesses. And of course you might have your regular suppliers that you work with, um, but it never hurts to really expand yourself. And you never know, you might find that one of the businesses that you would have overlooked may help supply a brand new product or a new way to, to service your customers. So then we reach the common institutional barrier for Black, Indigenous, people of color entrepreneurs. It is, major, it is majorly financial institutions. So these business owners are more predisposed to having less wealth, making it harder to borrow money. They are less able to access bank financing, as we saw previously. Um, a lot of black entrepreneurs will usually take out a credit card or Asian and Hispanic entrepreneurs will focus more on family and savings. In 2018, the Small Business Administration reported that minority businesses um, typically expense or ho experience higher interest rates and more loan denials. This is an example of exclusionary practices where it makes it harder for businesses to really reach out and gain the capital that they need to begin their business, or they take on these loans and end up falling into debt. Undercapitalized, Black banks have less capital and then struggle to help provide Black, Indigenous, and people of color owned businesses with financial support. So if you're unable to fund yourself, it makes it difficult for you to help someone else. Um, with the way that the pandemic has going, a lot of businesses have suffered, but the ones that are already lacking in financial support are really unlikely to survive through something such as devastating as this. Um, but more recently with PPP loans, a lot of big banks like JP Morgan and Citi are working with a few remaining black banks and credit unions. This is to help make sure that a lot of these loans that we've noticed have been going to really large companies or companies that should not, um, I don't wanna say should not have gained the access to the funds, but the, one, the funds that were initially designed for small businesses to continue. Um, they didn't have access to that. So by these banks working with these diverse financial institutions, it's helping them make sure that the funds are getting to some of the businesses that, that, they, that really do need them. So it's a, with supporting diverse banking, you can help keep black owned banks alive. Um, it can help banks provide greater access to capital as lenders. It can help banks hold businesses accountable as shareholders. It can help banks elevate policy as stakeholders. And then of course, grow diversity and inclusion as employers and closes, and closes the wealth gap. You personally, if you're not in a financial institution, but you still wanna help uh, a small business out with, with access to these things, certainly reach out, get the resources and support that they need to apply for loans, grants and other financial services. Having that information can help these businesses decide on what resources may be best for them and then making sure that they have everything that they need for the approval process. That's one of the things that I have noticed um, myself as a business owner um, is that it goes, that a lot goes into making sure that you have all the information that you need to be approved for a lot of the um, financial services that exist out there. And then of course that rolls into find and share programs that are available for black indigenous and people of color owned businesses. Um, and I, I did mean to share a few of the links but I didn't wanna overwhelm anybody with a bunch of uh, links, but um, there are a number of resources that are out there and that goes back to knowledge and the lack of being aware of that knowledge or data that's out there by making these businesses aware that these programs exist that might help them with avenues that they wouldn't be able to navigate on their own or come up with the support that they need financially on their own. So benefits to the economy.
So I pulled this quote from Julie Sweet. She is a predominant woman figure in business. Um, she says that we believe that our diversity makes us stronger, smarter, more innovative in helping us better serve the needs of our clients, our people, and our communities. I strongly resonate with this quote as if you help someone, it will return the favor in kind. Um, working together to really elevate the businesses that don't have as much of a spotlight or as much help as some of the other businesses can really benefit the community. So economic growth. Focusing on just entrepreneur gain, it can help a business continue to grow, establish financial stability, secure confidence to continue with the business venture, can establish generational wealth, or it can help create a family legacy. For all you know, that business that's down the street that might sell the best barbecue wings in the world that has come from a homemade recipe. That could be the start of something huge for that individual and then pass that on down to their children or pass it along to a family member or a friend if they don't have children. Um, community gain. The money that is provided to these businesses is funneled back into the community. More, more likely than not, that business owner is probably shopping locally as well. So when you pay for a service or a product, that money not only is helping them with their bills, of course, um, but then of course, going around and shopping for things that they might want or, a small, or another small business that they wanna support. It can increase drive for entrepreneurship and innovation. With the way that our youth absorbs everything, if they're seeing someone survive and make it through the struggles of being a small business, especially as a person of color, that can be very motivating. That can spark up something that says, I can do this too, or I have this passion that I love or this hobby that I really wanna share with the world and they can prosper upon that. They can take that to the next level instead of thinking, oh, well, it's not going to be good enough or I'm not going to make it anywhere. And that just rolls into where it uplifts the community. Knowing that small businesses are surviving and thriving can really just create a really wonderful sense of community. It's everyone all working together. It's everyone supporting one another. And it just kind of plays into that community over competition. It can then create employment opportunities. So as I mentioned before, if a business has the know-how and is able to prosper and thrive and grow, they may take their base to a larger platform. Well, they will need more people. So then jobs are now created in the community and the numbers of unemployment can go down, especially if these businesses are making enough money where they can provide their employees with a livable wage that can help reduce income inequality. And then country gain. Diversity, ec ec sorry, <laughs> equity and inclusion are looked at more closely and more likely to be implemented. We are a diverse nation. And a lot of times everyone will defer back to the melting pot idea. And rather we are more like a soup. We are all, there are a ton of different ingredients that are combined to make this one big, delicious, wonderful soup. <laughs> um, but it can just help promote more, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it can help combat biases and inequality, thus creating a more friendly environment to work in. Um, work culture is so important, especially when people are looking for jobs. A lot of times they may either work at a location that they don't feel welcomed at, but it's paycheck. Um, while some businesses push for diversity, um, equity, and inclusion, they may start support groups to make sure that businesses are offering support to these individuals. So all in all, it can really just help tear down those barriers and just make 
the culture of a workplace just function really well. And then profits and spending can help economic recession. So as we've seen over the years that our economy has ups and downs with money that's being funneled back into small businesses that are then creating these opportunities for employment, that just helps the wheel revolve with spinning with paying. I'm not, I'm not sorry, not paying, um, with spending. About 70% of, of, of the nation's financial wealth comes from consumer spending. So if we're promoting people to spend more money, earn more money, that just helps keep the world kind of going in a way. So I have a question for everyone to think about today is what can you change in your business or if you don't own a business in your community to create a supportive ecosystem for black indigenous people of color owned businesses? So in conclusion, supporting these businesses should never be a trend. You always want to make sure that you're being consistent and that you are intentional. Change is not going to happen overnight and it will of course take time, but we can create a stronger community together. So I just wanted to thank everyone for tuning in. That is my presentation today on um, creating supportive ecosystems for black, indigenous and people of color owned businesses. Awesome. Thank you so much. You did amazing. Um, really great. Um, I think there's a lot of information in here that a lot of people don't um, always realize. And I think um, also really cool that you own your own business and um, kind of see firsthand um, some of these things. Um, we do have an opportunity now, if anybody does have um, any questions that you would like to ask um, that we could ask, um, please put it in the Q&A section or the chat box. Um, but I have a question for you. Um, owning your own business, um, what are um, some of the challenges that you experience firsthand um, starting up? Um, and for anybody that is looking to open their business, what advice would you give them to um, either avoid those challenges or um, overcome them if they're struggling with them? So with, with my business, it actually started out of a a surgery that I had and I and I was no longer working at my job that I had at the time um, and I had a wonderful opportunity to kind of focus on something that I wanted to do um, so the first step I would say is if you have an idea love your idea <laughs> um, everybody says that when you when you um, when you have a business you'll never work it when you do something that you love you'll never work a day in your life and that is not at all true um so you want to make sure that whatever you want to do it's not really about making money that it's making sure that you really are passionate about what you want to do um for me a big challenge was definitely the funding um i had a, a wonderful person in my life that helped me with um gaining the equipment which is basically my camera to kind of get started um, so funding for equipment supplies, that's very important. And then the education aspect of it. Um, now there are plenty of schools that you could go to that, you know, want to teach photography or really any business that you really want to get into the industry that you want to get into. Um, I'd say, make sure that you plan that out. Uh, sometimes you might be able to find mentorship. I was able to find a photographer that was in my area. I actually was friends with her and didn't really know that she was such a well-known photographer in the area. And um, she kind of took me under her wing. I started as her um, assistant and I was able to learn the ins and outs of the business. I helped her with planning. I helped her with budgeting, um, keeping records of everything. And then once I kind of got the lowdown on what it was like to be in the industry, um, then I was able to, to start working with her as a second shooter because I was honing my skills um, along with her as her assistant. And then I grew to be good enough for her <laughs> to be her second shooter. Um, so definitely thinking about funding, um, whether it's gaining the support from friends and family or taking advantage of any of the programs that might be out there to help small businesses start up, 
definitely look into that. And then of course, there's just the, the knowledge aspect of it, making sure that you're knowledgeable in the industry that you're interested in really beginning a business. Um, and that's really just the two main places I would start. And then we have a, a question from Lauren Allen. Um, she said, nice job. Um, what is your contact info, Lakeisha, in case we want to use your business? <laughs> oh, that's so wonderful. Um, so my website is uh, beyondthepond.photography. Um, I'm also on Facebook under Beyond the Pond Photography and on Instagram. I believe my handle is Beyond Pond Photography. And I want to bring up one more question. I love the fact that you brought up mentorship. Um, you hear about that a lot um, in um, how to grow and develop. Um, what, um, what benefits did you get from um, having a mentorship and um, how would you recommend someone seek out a mentor? Oh boy. I just, I, when you asked me that, I just have so much good things to say about that. Um, well, her name is Marissa. She provided me with confidence. That was the first thing that I felt after I was able to work with her. Um, just the confidence that I could do something that I really wanted to do. Um, and then just having someone there to, to give you the expertise that just the knowledge is, is just so valuable. And, and while you could learn so many things on your own, being able to have someone kind of right there beside you, guiding you, showing you, you know, the mistakes that you want to avoid as starting, starting out, that is super invaluable. Um, there's just absolutely nothing that can replace that. And then working with her um, allowed me to, to meet other people that were in my industry that she knew. Um, it helped me with um, business decisions like marketing, um, where she got her props from, how she rolls things out. It's just it's so much information and, and a mentorship can't, I don't believe a mentorship can hurt you. I think it really can only help you. Um, so if someone is really looking for a mentor or a mentorship, it's say start local if you can. If you know someone that's in an industry that you want to get into, say, hey, you know, I really want to learn more about this. Um, would you be able to find the time, you know, to, to teach me some things if they, depending on what kind of industry they're in, you know, if they can offer some kind of um, internship, definitely take it. It's, it's knowledge is wealth in, in that aspect. It really, really is. It can take you so far and you learn so much and, and that can really just begin the start of networking, being able to reach out to the people that, you know, that they work with, or at least um, give you an idea of where to start when it comes to networking. Awesome. All right, I wanna give a, just a moment longer if anybody has a last minute question. Um, now's the time to put it in the chat. Give it just five seconds or so. All right, Lakeisha, thank you again so much for this. Um, very insightful and very glad to have you on today with us. And thank everybody else too for also spending your lunch hour with us. Um, we did record this session. Um, it will uh, be on our Facebook and our YouTube pages. So definitely check it out. Um, if you missed um, any of our sessions um, or wanna go back to the recordings, um, they are on the Facebook and um, YouTube in a playlist. Um, we encourage you to visit the event page. We have two more sessions coming up. Our next one is on Monday, and it's let's talk about implicit bias in the workplace and community. Um, and also feel free to share this information with anybody that you feel like might benefit from it. Um, at the Greater Wyoming Valley Chamber, uh, we do have our Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Council, and we look at um, diversity in uh, the Wyoming Valley and how to um, improve it and expand it. Um, if you're ever interested in joining our council or getting our news, um, check out the Get Involved page on our website. Um, we have more information there um, that is open to everyone in the community. So definitely check that out. Um, thanks again, everybody, and hope you enjoy the rest of your afternoon.
Thank you. Bye.